Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lily, and I'm so happy that you are here with me today. Happy 2023. In this video, I am going to show you how to create little house pockets, but these are going to be birthday themed. These are my signature little house pockets. I came up with this idea last year, 2022, and I have created several themes, but in today's video, we are working on birthday themes. I do have a playlist for these little house pockets, and I also will link all of the other videos where I have made whimsical houses, Christmas, Halloween, fall, and a few others, I'm sure. All of that information will be linked down below. So if you'd like to go see how it all got started, that information will be down below. But this has been a theme that has been at the top as far as requests go. I've received a lot of, of feedback and requesting that I create birthday themed little houses. And as a matter of fact, I had these on my list and so I had planned on creating them for the month of January. So here we go. And I'm showing you, I was just showing you a couple of the punches that I've used to create that banner. And it's a punch that I've had from Stampin' Up! for several years. But I'm sure if you are interested in something like this, you can, you can find it online. Or you can also just cut little triangles and create your own little banner. I also used a heart punch from Stampin' Up, but I do have others that are not Stampin' Up. You can also fussy cut or draw your own heart and cut those out as well. So you can use, go through your stash, look to see what you have, and let's, let's just play with our things. And that's basically what I am doing here. I went through my sticker stash, I went through my paper pads and my scrap papers, and also a bunch of random die cuts that I had. So what I like to do with the paper scraps is I'll take all of my punches and I'll just start punching away different, different shapes. Stars, hearts, circles, scallop circles, rectangle squares, all kinds of things. And that's my way of using up my scraps and then I separate them in different containers or in cellophane bags. So when I'm looking for a certain shape, I just, they're already die cut and I just reach in and grab. And that is a lot of what I use when I'm embellishing this little, little, um, these little house envelope pockets. I'm also using bigger sheets of paper. So I went through some of my paper pads and I'll show you in just a moment which paper pad I am using because I honestly don't have a lot of vibrant paper scraps anymore. I've used most of, most of those scraps I used last year. So we're actually going to use a, a paper pad and use full sheets to collage the one that we are going to work on, okay? This one is my favorite. This one is like a little garden happy birthday. When I was creating these off camera, I had someone in mind. And so this, I had my mother in mind for this card. And then I also, the one with a little, uh, little Volkswagen or little VW van, I had my dad in mind. And then I created one with my best friend in mind. And then, so that was the only way I could actually work on birthdays is uh, as I would create as if I was giving it to that special person and knowing what they like. And that is, that is how I created it. And so this was the very first one. And this one, uh, I had my best friend in mind. Très chic. Oh, so stylish. And that window is used from a negative die cut. So I save all of those pieces, mainly because that glitter paper is so pretty. I, I just couldn't get myself to throw it away. I also used thickers. Thickers I have had in my stash, you guys, for so many years, five, six, eight years. I also used um, strips of washi tape, stickers that didn't even have sticky anymore, you guys. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in just a moment because when I was telling my sister that I went through my old sticker stash, um, oh my gosh, we were laughing because they didn't have sticky anymore. So I'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, I struggled with this masculine card, if we want to call it a masculine card. So I had my dad in mind. 
And it's the only way I was able to create this card. So I struggle, you guys. I wanted it to be more manly, ar, ar, ar. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and I just couldn't do it. And there were others that I tried creating off camera. I could not create a really like burly man, really, ar, I don't know how to explain it. I couldn't do it. So it's something that I need to work on <laughs> when it comes to creating more masculine cards. But this is the extent of, of the masculinity creative or a happy birthday card. But I'm sure that when I give this card to my dad, he's going to like it. Because it's cute. It's a cute card. So there you go. That circle that I'm using there is a chimney. Is actually a two-inch. I used a two-inch uh, punch. And it was from a tissue box. So I repurpose the tissue boxes, you guys, once they're empty. Because some of those designs are very pretty. And then I'll just randomly punch different shapes out. The base of the little houses, I don't think I've mentioned it, is a is an envelope. And I use number 10 envelopes that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. These have been in my stash for a very long time. I also have a box of envelopes that I purchased at the thrift store. So use whatever you have. And you can also use junk mail envelopes and business reply junk mail envelopes. And I showed you that it here's this is one right here and in order to be able to use my junk mail envelopes for projects like this I'm very careful when it comes to opening my junk mail I grab a pair of scissors and I cut an end and then empty out the contents and then I put it away a, uh, with in a box with other junk mail envelopes this one's pretty easy it is it has adhesive on it so I just took that little film away and I am sealing the flap because what we are going to create is a long vertical pocket. And I'm gonna open one of the edges by just trimming a sliver from that envelope. Now, the very first video I created making whimsical little house pockets, I was a lot more thorough and the process was a lot slower. So if you'd like to see that video, that was the very first one that I made last year and it is linked down below. To create the roof of the little house, I just fold over, I wanna say that's maybe two and a half to three inches. I don't measure it, I just eyeball it, you guys. And they all have fit perfectly in my junk journals. My junk journals are usually about eight or eight and a half inches tall, and so these just fit perfectly in there. What I'm doing now is cutting slits on the sides of the envelopes and I'm going to go about half an inch past that fold line. And what this creates is a little gap between the fold and the pocket. And that just makes it easier to reach in and place your contents in the pocket and also to take the contents out. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. This was something that I created back in 2020. And I was creating pockets and, and it was kind of, it was kind of tricky to get your fingers in there to pull things out. And even though I had cut a notch out in the original, the very first video from 2020, um, it was still, I still had to kind of force my hand and, or my fingers in there. Anyway, I came up with this idea of having that little gap right there. So if you'd like to see that video. If you go to my homepage on my YouTube channel, as of right now, it is the most popular video and it's one that I did in 2020. But you know which one is coming up? Real, like a close second is the Little Christmas House video. Yeah, that one's, that one is number two. So if you wanna go see those, just hop on over to my homepage on my YouTube channel and you'll see my most popular videos right there. So I folded over that flap and glued down just a little bit of it to reinforce that pocket. Now I'm going to collage over it anyway, which is going to reinforce it even more. But again, because we're going to be placing things in that pocket, depending on what you're using it for. One of the reasons that I receive so many requests for making birthday little houses is to use these in lieu of a birthday card. 
which is the idea that I had when I created the whimsical houses and the Christmas houses as well, creating little houses in lieu of greeting cards, because in that pocket, you could, you could insert cash or gift cards or a tag with, um, with a sentiment. There's so many ideas for these little pockets, you guys. I'm showing you, these are all the vibrant scraps that I have left over, which I can't believe just blows my mind. Now I have a lot of Christmas scraps, but as far as vibrant and like all occasion type of papers, that was the extent of the scraps. Wow, I really went through those last year. This paper pad is so pretty, you guys. It is so cute. It is from Joann's and I picked it up sometime last year. Not only because of the beautiful, vibrant colors, but because it is a thick paper. Look at all that paper, you guys. And of course, I'm sure I probably bought it when it was on sale, but it's by the Park Lane brand, which Joanne carries. And I've already used up some of the full sheets on the other little, on, on the little house pockets. And then the scraps, I just put them back in that paper pad. I think it's the easiest way to store larger scraps of paper. Just keep them in the paper pad itself. So this one, I absolutely love, you guys. It has a garden theme, and I'm going to recreate it. Did you guys watch my shorts video that I uploaded yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Go to my shorts videos. So cute. It was actually a Snapchat that I sent to my sister and, and I said, oh my gosh, look at this cute little, I, what did I tell her? I don't remember, but I didn't even remove the audio <laughs> from the video. I left the same audio. Anyway, it was a behind the scenes. It was meant for my sister only, but when I played it back, it was so silly. It was so dramatic. <laughs> and so I thought it would be fun to share it on my YouTube short. So it is there. It's actually giving you a sneak peek as to what I um, was creating. And then I thought it would be fun to recreate that one and try to try to make it as close as possible to to that one. I don't have I don't have a lot of extras of these embellishments, but I get pretty close, pretty close to it. So what I'm doing now is I am going to collage or cover the facade, the front of the envelope. And then I'm also going to line the inside of the pocket. Now I measured this envelope and it measures four and one, four and four and one eighth. Okay. The inside, but I want to tuck it in and then fold it over and I'll show you that in just a moment. I needed to tuck in. So I cut a sliver of it which is probably four and one sixteenth of an inch. I just needed it to fit in the pocket so I could fold it over. Now, every time I make these little houses, you guys, it each one is a little bit different than the one before. And I think that the more you work on these, your technique will evolve just as mine has. And you'll, if you've been following me from from the very first video of these, you'll notice how, how my, my techniques have evolved and they've actually become simplified. But if you want to learn all of the steps and all of the different options for collaging the front, you, got it, you have to start with video number one. <laughs> now, I don't trim these. Now, you could trim the excess off but I don't do that. I just fold it over. It gives the edges a nice clean look. And then at the same time, because we're folding over that excess, it is going to decorate the back of the pocket. I don't work too much on embellishing the back. And I've mentioned this before because if you were to give this as as a greeting card um, or in lieu of a greeting card, you would want to write your sentiment on the back or, or just leave it blank, but lots of options, lots of ideas for the back. And so I don't embellish too much, but I do fold over. 
the papers. So now I am going to line the inside of the pocket. Because the envelope is four and four and oh my gosh, is it two eighths? Anyway, it's a little bit, little bit wider than four inches. Your envelope might be different from my envelope, you guys. So you, you're going to have to measure it. <laughs> so what I want to do is trim it down to about four inches so that it fits on the inside of the pocket. And in order for it to fit, we're going to have little gaps or the white is going to be exposed just a tiny bit. And I'm pointing that out. That doesn't bother me, okay? If it bothers you, you can trim off the excess, but it does not bother me at all. And I'm not going to line all the way down to the bottom. There's no need to, it doesn't, it's not a window envelope. So I'm just inserting it maybe an inch or two into that pocket, and then I'm going to glue it down. Now I've also made some little houses using window envelopes. And for those, I did line the inside of the pocket all the way down to the bottom because you could see it through the window. So this isn't, this isn't a project where you're just going to stick to solid uh, envelopes. You can also use the window envelopes and those little houses turned out so cute as well. So now I'm just going to glue it down and I'm going to reposition it because one of the sides had more of that edge exposed and I'm trying to even it out on both sides. With this paper, I'm also not going to trim the excess. I'm just going to fold it over. But before I do that, I'm going to fold the flap again. You want to fold as you go so that you don't lose the crease. Because after adding multiple layers, you could lose it. So just crease and fold as you go. And now I'm going to fold over the excess paper. If you don't want to fold it over, you could cut it off. But look at how nice that looks. And there's less cutting, you guys. One long strip of paper is enough for the inside of the pocket, the outside roof, and a little bit will go on the back. Let's say you have a ton of scraps. You don't have to use full sheets of paper. You can collage bits and pieces of paper on the front, on the inside, and on the back if you wish. So that is the back and it looks just as nice. So it's entirely up to you if you want to leave it blank with the white of the envelope exposed or if you want to cover it up. I've done both. It all depends on my mood. It depends on, and it also depends on the length of the paper. But I don't stress if the paper isn't long enough, I'm not gonna stress that it's not gonna cover the entire back. If it's short, it's okay. Then we can embellish with stickers or words or just leave it blank. They look, they all look, they all turn out great, you guys. And it's, it's so flattering to hear from all of you um, who have been creating these little houses and have used them and have given them out. It is just so flattering and, you know, to, and for you to share how you've used them as well. I've had some people um, decor uh, decorated their Christmas tree with these. And then others have already given them out as birthday cards. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I think my sister was the first recipient of one as a birthday card and hers was Frida inspired. <laughs> so now I'm showing you how I went through my stash of tags and these are tags that came from paper kits, Crate Paper, Maggie Holmes, uh, let's see, uh, the Stampin' Up, Pumpkin, oh my gosh, Pumpkin something. But these are all kits, ephemera kits, and I keep them all together 
Oh, that's cute. That one says you're getting old. That little tag would be perfect as a door for a little house pocket for a birthday card. <laughs> so I thought that was cute. So all of these tags came from ephemera kits or even cut apart. That one was a cut apart. I keep all of my tags in a drawer. And so I had to go through that little drawer and pull them apart or excuse me, pull them out. What I'm looking for is a door and this one would be perfect, but it does look kind of large. And I already saw this one that says, um, celebrate together, which I think goes really well with the color scheme, but any card would do. If you don't have tags from ephemera kits, you can also make your own tags. And that's what I did with these. I used cardstock and I did not have a die or a template. I just measured and fussy cut some tags, punched a hole and added a reinforcer. That black one though is from a Stampin' Up! Punch. And then the floral one is from floral leftover scrap paper. So you can create your own. In fact, that black one, I love the way the black looks on that green little house. I love it. So I need, I need to make a mental note to use a black door on a future card because I was really surprised at how nice that looked. Now, let's say you don't want to make your own tags. I save all of my clothing tags, you guys. I have been doing it for years. And when I say years, I want to say almost 20 years. I kid you not. So I have a separate drawer of nothing but clothing tags. And those clothing tags, a lot of them I use in my own personal junk journal. So I pulled out some that I thought would work really well with this theme. Look at that one. This floral one says hippie rose would be absolutely perfect as a door. So that was a contender as well. When I saw this Converse tag, I thought, oh my gosh, that could be the start of a masculine card, <laughs> even though those Converse were for me <laughs> and I'm ultra feminine, but it could, you know, you could use it to make a feminine card, but because I struggle making masculine cards, that Converse tag would be perfect. So now we're going to create a doorknob. So now that I've selected the tag that I'm going to use as a door, let's choose a doorknob. In the past, I've used gems and also the hole punches, the little papers that are left over from punching a hole with your office hole punch. I've used that as a doorknob too. But I remembered I have this little box with random buttons and I also have brads in here. Now, if you are going to use brads, you need to attach the brad before gluing your door down, okay? And I am going to use a brad for this store. So I'm just kind of going through my little stash of brads and I think this green one will be perfect. I also have a whole bunch of orange ones if you look over on the left-hand side. Floral buttons would be cute too for this theme, but that one was too large. But whatever you have, you don't even have to add a doorknob if you don't want to. But look at those orange ones. You guys, I've had those orange ones. Uh, I, know, I know they're more than 10 years old. And because I moved back to California in 2010. I'm currently in Utah. But I was in California in 2010. And I already had those orange brads for years. So almost 15, 20 years. Oh, my gosh. So we're, it's all about, this is all about using your stash. And that's what we're doing. We're going through the stuff that we used to use for scrapbooking and for, for um, pocket, pocket scrapbooking and card making. Raise your hand if you used to scrapbook. Raise your hand if you used to be a card maker. Raise your hand if you used to do Project Life or pocket journaling, you guys. Raise your hand. I want to know. Because... I started doing all of those things in the 90s. I am 53 years old. So if you did any of those things that were paper craft related, you guys, I know you've got supplies. And I know you didn't get rid of them. I know you have them. You just haven't used them because styles change. But 
do they really? Do they really? Because I'm using stuff that I've had for a really long time. Styles may change, but I'm still using a lot of vibrant colors. And we can find new ways to use old stash. So if you have been doing paper crafts since the 80s or the 90s, I need you to go into that stash and I need you to pull it out and we need to start using it, you guys. Because I've got things that I know I'm not going to be able to use in a lifetime. I have things that I've been hoarding for 20 years. In another 20 years, I'm going to be 73 years old, God willing. And I'm still going to be using those little orange brads. <laughs> So let's use up all those orange brads. And if you don't like the color orange, paint it. Use your acrylic paints and paint those brads. Okay, so you saw how I added the brad is the doorknob. And now I'm grabbing my ATG gun, my tape runner, because it's sticky stuff. And I know it's going to secure my door down. I also added some trim because I'm okay with this looking like a tag. But when it's all put together, it turns into a door. Look at how stinking cute. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, so now I have to continue to embellish. And I will say I didn't have all of the, the things I needed at the ready. And so I kind of had to go through my things. But I want to show you some of the stickers that I have had that I actually went through that have been neglected. And these are stickers that I used to use in a lot of my pocket journaling. Now, I still pocket journal, you guys. I don't do it as often, but I still do. And I love using all of these little stickers in pocket journaling. They're so cute. So they're not just meant for planners. All these little cute embellishments are perfect, perfect for pocket journaling or for scrapbooking. And I'm pointing out that these date back to 2015. Can you believe that? The uh, Project Life, those are from 2015. And the Paper Studio ones are from 2016. We are now in 2023. Those stickers are seven years old. So some of them don't have sticky. Some do. These Project Life ones I picked up. I honestly don't remember where, but they are from 2015. <laughs> so... What is that? Five, eight years old. Oh, time flies, you guys. I'm showing you here that I use that Tray Chic sticker as a door on the Happy Birthday Little House because it was the perfect size for it. These are Dollar Tree stickers, also several years old. And I used these for the garden theme house. I say garden theme because it has a plant. <laughs> And they're somewhat dimensional, but they are so, so cute. So I set those aside because I'm going to use one of those stickers for the front of the little pocket. These are me and my big ideas. And I love these stickers. I have loved these me and my big idea stickers since the late 90s or the early 2000s. But these aren't quite that old. These go back to 2014. I guess that is old. That's nine years old. You guys, I know I'm not the only one that has stash that is this old. We need to go through it. We need to go through it. This is my favorite card. Well, my second favorite. And that little VW bug came from Dollar Tree stickers. So cute. And I want to point out that that little birthday house with the little van, that's to make it look as though that's the driveway. So then you have the little, ha the little door and the car right next to it to look like a driveway. And then I had a dad sticker, and so I just added it to the top. Oh my gosh, so stinking cute. Okay, this is what I'm talking about right here. So when I was telling my sister that my stickers were old, she says, what do you mean? So I sent her a video. I said, this is what I mean. They are no longer sticking. And these are stickers from 2014. Yep, they, they are. 2014, that's nine years ago. So if I open these packages, the stickers are just going to fly out. And my sister says, those aren't stickers anymore. Those, that's now ephemera. And I, I died, you guys. I was laughing so hard because it's true. They used to be stickers. Now they're just ephemera. <laughs> so, so 
they're just falling out of the packages. But I love the Mambo. These, and these are kind of chippy. They're thick, like, um, cause they're made from chipboard. And these are some of my favorite, favorite stickers. They're just all over the place. Some of them are still sticky <laughs> and others are not. They're just kind of floating around in the pockets. Look at that. That's ridiculous. I should have used these up much faster. Look at them. Just sliding out of their cellophane like confetti. I'm going to pause. I'm going to take a sip of water. Please enjoy what's on the screen. Oh my gosh, so hilarious, you guys. So I will pull a couple of these to use in the little house. <laughs> in the little house. It's like, that's ridiculous. Oh my gosh, so funny. So that's why they're in that box. Because when I first reached in into my sticker stash to grab them, they started falling on the floor. So I had to reach over and grabbed the first box I, I had close by. And that's where I put them all to just kind of contain them. So yeah, they're not, they're no longer sticky. This little frame is what I used as a window on one of the little houses. And I'm going to use it again. So I'm so, that was a happy find because I didn't think I had a second one. So there we go. How perfect is that? This is just to show you how I didn't plan. <laughs> I didn't plan very well. When I make my videos, I like to have all of my things nearby. So, so I don't take as long creating my things. But I honestly didn't know what I was going to do as far as the window. So yay, we have, a, we have a second frame. So now I'm going to back it up with some floral paper. And I use this purple floral paper. And I'm just going to cut a square to back up that little frame. So that it kind of looks like a curtain. As though you're looking inside someone's little house. But all you see is a curtain. I'd like to know, I'm curious to know how many years you've been paper crafting. Are you brand new to paper crafting? Uh, or have you been paper crafting? And not just junk journaling, you guys. I love junk journaling, but I also love all of the other things. I love scrapbooking and all of those other things that I mentioned. If it requires paper and glue, I'm going to love it. And so if you have been scrapbooking and card making, or junk journaling for a long time. I'm curious to know how many years you've been paper crafting. And also, if you are brand new to the paper crafting um, hobby, let me know. Let me know. So I have been paper crafting since I was a kid. Well, we all, we all, we started doing that in elementary. Well, I never stopped. And I used to make my own greeting cards when I was in junior high and in high school, and then I would make envelopes from old papers and calendars. And then in the 80s, I was making, do you guys remember those big ruffly photo albums that had the fabric covers and the lace and you know all of that? They were like a binder photo album. I, I made my own, and then I was making those for hire, almost like a junk journal back in the 80s, you guys. <laughs> except it was a photo album. I've mentioned this in the past. This is not new information. And I so wish that I still had the one that I made for my first daughter. My first daughter was born in 1988 and I made her album. Maybe I still have it in storage somewhere, but I, I don't know. I don't know if I kept it or not. But you guys remember those. Did you guys ever have one of those? Did you make one of those? So that's basically... It is, it's almost the way we make junk journals now by piecing things together. So, so yeah, getting sidetracked, but that's what I was, that I've been doing this for a long time. And then it's evolved. When I first discovered rubber stamping in the nineties, oh my, it, 
I was blown away. Blown away. I love rubber stamp. I still love rubber stamping. I still, I still buy stamps, you guys, all the time. I have a weakness, weakness for rubber stamps and paper. As much as I say I'm not going to buy any more supplies, I can't. I can't. It's too good. Do I buy food or do I buy paper? Hmm. <laughs> My sister teases me about that all the time. Okay, let's add a little floral sticker, a potted plant. I'm using tacky glue, you guys, because I also came across a box of adhesives. Can you believe that? That's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't need to be... I kid you not, I honestly don't need to be buying any glue in 2023. And so let's see if I, if I stick to that. But I'm going to try not to buy any glue until I use up everything that's in that box. And I also found more glue sticks. These Avery glue sticks, those work really well. And the tacky glue is working really well too. And my art glitter glue that is there on its side, on the right-hand side, that's empty. That is empty. I don't know why I'm still holding onto the container. And as much as I wanted to buy and order some new um, art glitter glue, because I love it. I love it. I'm going to use it my tacky glue first. So now I'm going to add a chimney in quotation marks. And it is a watering can. And I'm just going to make it um, protrude at the top just a little bit. Sometimes I go higher, sometimes I go lower. But when you open up the flap, it's going to be flat. So it doesn't interfere with the, with the opening of it. What are we adding next? I am going to look for some trim to add to the roof line and also some words and some hearts. These hearts I've had for a long time too. And I, I think they are from Hobby Lobby. I think. And I'm going to add them just an, under the spout of the watering can to look as though I am watering the garden with hearts, just sprinkling with love. Look at these cute little cat stickers. I've used these in the past. I think I used them, yes, in the Halloween junk journals. They were, I used them on the door, on the little door, one of the pages of the junk journal. They are so cute. I think they're from Hobby Lobby. If they're not from Hobby Lobby, they were from Deso, one or the other. I don't own a cat. I have never, ever owned a cat, but I think I'm a cat lady because I love all the cat stickers and the cat paper and the cat ephemera and the cat embellishments. I love it, but I don't own a cat. <laughs> Tell me that's not crazy. And look at how perfect it looks just sitting there on the windowsill. Oh my gosh. So cute, you guys. And now I'm going to go through more stickers. These Project Live stickers. So what I did, I didn't know what I was going to use, you guys. I kind of just started thumbing through the stickers. And I thought, what could I use to embellish these little houses? And what could I, what could I use as a chimney? What could I use as a door? And that camera there, and you saw it earlier, I used it as a chimney on this one. And then I stuck a little heart on that lens. So I'm thumbing through the stickers, and then I saw these little, what are they, like little ruffles? And I thought, that would be perfect to look like an awning on the edge of the roof. In other houses that I've made, I used pom-pom trim, and I love using pom-pom trim, you guys, on the edge. But I saw this in the stickers, and I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use up my stickers. But you could also DIY your own little trim. And so I took one of my edge punches. It is an old Martha Stewart edge punch, and I cut a strip that can totally be used as a little trim on the roof. And so I'm showing you here how you could do that as well. 
It's just another option. So I don't want you to feel FOMO, FOMO, F-O-M-O. I have FOMO, you guys. I have FOMO bad. FOMO stands for the fear of missing out, FOMO. And I tell my sister this all the time and I struggle with FOMO. Um, but when I go through my stash and when I revisit my supplies, the FOMO fades because I've got plenty that I can use. There are so many new things that are coming out on a daily basis. That's why I feel FOMO. But I also have a lot and I need to be grateful for all the things that I do have that I can use. I don't need to be <laughs> going out and getting new supplies because of FOMO. So I don't want you to feel FOMO either. So you may not have the exact same things that I have, but I wanna show you other things that you can use. I want you to see that there are options. And if you don't have the stickers, then you can use an edge punch. You may not have the Martha Stewart punch, but you might have a different punch that you could use. You may not have a punch at all, but maybe we've got some scrap papers and we've got a nice, maybe a pen in your favorite color, a gel pen. And let's draw a border. In the whimsical houses, the most fun thing that I did and my favorite part of those whimsical houses were the wonky borders that I added to the roof line. And I used jelly print papers and then I out outlined it with a marker. That was my favorite. And this is basically what I did is I just drew it and then I, I cut it wonky and everything, but it lent itself to the look and to the whole aesthetic of those little houses. So see how we're doing it here? Just kind of place your envelope above so it gives you a guide as to how wide to make it. And then and then just cut it. Now I drew it and now you're going to kind of follow the loops or the scallops. And then once it's cut, you can add it to the roof line. Now I'm not gonna use this one because it doesn't match. But this is just to give you an idea of what you could do. So I sure hope that you find this helpful, you guys. I create these, uh, these videos because I love paper crafting. I love making. Um, it, it does. It just brings me so much joy. And, and I want to be able to share this joy with you. And so I hope that you are also crafting along with me. I should have probably invited you to do that in the beginning. But I like to watch YouTube videos as I'm crafting. So I hope that you craft along to my videos as well. Maybe you don't have colored cardstock. Maybe you have scraps of, of white cardstock. We're gonna do the same thing. And in fact, I think I like the way this looks even better because it pops even more. So I just grabbed a blue pen and I'm doing the exact same thing they don't have to be even. Mine are wonky. I'm okay with that. I'm grabbing a pair of smaller scissors to make the easier cuts. Have you guys noticed in all my videos, sometimes I'll use two, three, five, or six different pairs of scissors. <laughs> Mainly because they get lost on the desk. And so then I have to reach for a new pair. <laughs> So again, doing the same thing, if you don't need a guide, so I'm also going to show you how you can just do a wonky scallop edge without drawing it first. And it doesn't matter if the first scallop is bigger than the last one. Look at how cute that looks. That one would have actually looked really nice. If I didn't already have the sticker, I would use that one. I would just glue it down. And I will save it for another project. You'll see, I'll show you in the future that I'm going to use it. So this is me cutting a scalloped wonky border without drawing it out first. And I'm not taking my time for the sake of the video and because this video is almost an hour long, I'm just being wonky. And if that were a different color, it would be perfect for my little roof line. So 
So now I'm just going to glue it down. By the way, you guys, if you are at all interested, now I said I don't want you to feel FOMO, but if you don't have stickers and you would like to have stickers, right? Um, I did, I do have uh, some of the things, some of the favorite things that I use. And there is a link down below. It is my Amazon affiliate link. And I do share some of the things, some of my most favorite things and some of the things that I have used in this video. So if you want to go take a look and see what those items look like, um, just up close and personal, there is that link down below for you to go visit. I do have to let you know that as an Amazon affiliate, if you do make a purchase using that link, I do earn a small commission, which in no way affects you at all. But I thank you in advance if you do. Okay, so here are more stickers, you guys. <laughs> I was surprised that these were still attached to the sheet because they really don't have any more sticky on them. Now, I don't have the exact same one that I used on the little house to the left, but look at what a perfect match this was. I just need to add some adhesive to it. Now, if you, if you don't have like stickers that spell out the word happy, but you have alphabet stickers, you could also do that and spell out the word happy. If you don't have all the letters, you can just use the letter H and the letter B for happy birthday. Or maybe just use celebrate. You see how, you know, there's just so many things that you could use without using the word happy birthday. Let's say you're limited and you don't have, you know, um, the stickers to spell out happy birthday. We can, we can do happy day. We can do best day. You know, this is where the creativity comes in. Okay, so now I'm just going to glue it down. I did get some glue. I did make a mess with the glue. So I'm going to try to wipe it up. But then I remembered I have the, the glue gummy eraser. And so once it dries, I will clean up the glue. Because I don't like the way it looks. That is, that is a gold foil and that glue looks so messy there. <laughs> So I just wasn't being careful. And that tacky glue, because it doesn't have a really fine point, it does get all over the place a little bit, but that's okay. We just clean it up. I'm loving how this is turning out, you guys. This is so cute. My sister was telling me that she was getting Mother's Day vibes with this, with this card. And it's true. It, it does look like it can also be used as a Mother's Day card as a, and, but also a birthday card for mom, for grandma, for auntie, for your BFF. It could also be used in a springtime theme junk journal. All kinds of things. A garden theme journal, you guys. Yes. These are gold foil stickers from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree? Oh my gosh, I don't remember if it was Dollar Tree or the 99 cent store. Correct me if you know, because I've had these for a long time. And I bought them in California. And in California, they have 99 cent stores, but they also have Dollar Tree stores. That's why I don't remember. But because I knew they were only available for a limited time, I probably bought 20 packages. Yeah, I've used most of them. And I was happy that I found a happy day sticker. I use the purple hearts because it kind of matches my curtains. And the card on the left, it also matches the lavender part potted plant. Now that that glue has dried, this was the best little invention. Whoever invented this is a genius, you guys. Who would have ever thought that you would be able to pick up dry glue 
from your project without leaving any residue. That cleaned it up so nice, that little gum eraser. Genius! My little watering can needs a flower, but I couldn't find one at the ready. But I came across this little bow. So I'm just going to glue the little bow on there. It doesn't have any sticky, so I have to add some glue to it. These are so super fun to create. They can, they can take up some time because you're using, there's so much detail and, and the more you work on them, the more ideas that you have and the more supplies you want to use. Like the, you can't over embellish these, you guys. They are so stinking cute. So now I'm going to take one of my gel pens and this is just a generic gel pen. I think I bought a pack of these at Costco um, many years ago. And this is a copper gel pen. And I'm just going to outline the little house. By doing this, it kind of brings it all together. It frames the little house in a way that makes it look finished. I was, I was going to use my gold pen, but can you believe I used up all the ink in the gold pen? Mm -hmm. And it's the Signa by the Signa brand gold pen, which is the same brand as my favorite white gel pen. But I used it all up. So this one is one that I also use often. It's a great way too to go through your through your stash of gel pens. I remember when I first started out rubber stamping in the 90s and when I didn't have a a certain stamp, let's say I wanted a bicycle stamp or a floral stamp or a cloud stamp, I drew a lot of my things. Um, and then I would use it as, I would turn it into a card front. When I was first building my rubber stamp collection and I need, I need to remember that I can do that, <laughs> that I can take, that I can take pen to paper. And if I don't have a certain stamp that I can draw it. I'm talking, you guys, I'm not an artist. I'm not a, I'm not a, yeah, I'm not a professional artist at all. So I don't want you to think that, oh, I draw <laughs> Picasso. Um, I'm talking about simple little figures, little drawings I learned in elementary school. That is my extent of drawing. But I can draw a simple bicycle. I can draw a simple flower. And so every time I go to use my pen, I remember that I can draw simple figures like that. So, so stinking cute. Okay, so we are coming to the end, but I want, don't want you to go away, you guys. I want, to, I want you to watch till the very end. I had a really, really good question by one of my subscribers. And she asked how I mail these, how I place these in the mail. Well, I will be honest and tell you that I have not mailed one of these out on its own. The ones that have been mailed have gone out in Happy Mail or they have gone out in my Etsy orders because they're already included in the junk journals, okay? But she posed a very important question, a very good question. And so I'm going to show you what I came up with um, if you are planning to mail these out. Now you can also, you can always size them down to fit into an envelope. But if you already have envelopes, um, I'm gonna show you what type of envelope you can use to mail these out. And I didn't measure these, you guys. I just got really lucky. Now I'm showing you all of these put together. They look absolutely beautiful, you guys. Look, it looks like a birthday party. So stinking cute. I love the one with that triang the triangle little banner. I love the one with a little van. Oh my gosh, the one with the hot air balloon as a chimney. Knock it off. Stop it. They're all cute. I love them. Yeah, I made them. I love them. I love them. Um, so I'm now going to show you 
the envelopes that you can use. These are random greeting card envelopes that I have in my stash. And then some that I've also purchased, I'll purchase packages of just plain greeting card envelopes. The red ones are marked Hallmark. So these are just in my stash. And these envelopes fit perfect in, these little house pockets fit perfect in those envelopes. And those envelopes range in sizes. So the smaller one measures five and a quarter by seven and a quarter, which is your five by seven greeting card size. And then the larger of the two, oh, let me just stop really quick. This is how I use these little houses. I use them as a floating pocket in my junk journals and I usually just attach it with a paper clip to the very first page in all of the junk journals. So I was just showing you that really quick. The larger of the two envelopes measures five and three quarters by eight and a quarter. So just to give you an idea. And this is five by seven. And look at how perfect it is going to fit in that envelope. Now, she also asked me what it would cost and if it would require additional postage. I don't have an answer to that question. Um, so that is something. What I would do, personally, what I would do if I was going to be mailing this one out, I would put two stamps on it. But if you want exact postage because you don't want, you know, you don't want to use up two whole stamps if you don't need to, um, just take it to the post office and have them weigh it. It may just require one, one stamp and maybe an additional ounce. I don't know, you guys. I don't know what it's going to cost. <laughs> All I know is that it fits in the envelope. And because I am at the post office regularly, I would just take it with me and have, have them weigh it and then tell me what it's going to cost and then add the postage to it. But if I was not going to the post office regularly, I would probably stick two stamps on there. But don't take my word for it, you guys. You got, guys got to do your own research. <laughs> you guys got to go visit the post office. But this is to show you that you can use a greeting, a greeting envelope. You can also, before you even begin to create these little house pockets, Take into consideration the envelope that you are going to place it in and then work around that. Because this obviously, see this one would be too large for that five by seven envelope. However, it would be perfect for the larger envelope. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So when I fold down the flap, I don't measure it. Again, because I'm not mailing these out individually. But if I were to mail it out individually, then I am going to take the carrier envelope and then fold my flap over to a size that I know is going to fit into that carrier envelope. Does that make sense? <laughs> and even if you were to add a little chimney to it that protrudes at the top, this is how you do it. There's my little chimney and it's still going to fit into that five by seven envelope. Ta-da! <laughs> so thank you so much for that question. And so I hope that you find this helpful and I hope that you put these in the mail. That'll be fun. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Big hugs. Happy New Year. And I will talk to you later. Bye.